So you probably know rattan as a material that's used in making furniture. But in Thailand, they make a rare curry. Ying, my wife, grew up in southern Thailand. Have you ever heard of the rattan shoot curry? No. Never. Never? Ever. Even I asked my mom, my mom said, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and today, we're going to show you how to eat it. Oh, wow. Oh, that's flavorful. But really quickly, first, how did we get here? In order to support local communities and highlight their unique food, the Tourism Authority of Thailand has recently announced Thailand's hidden dishes, which includes five rarely seen Thai dishes that come from five lesser visited provinces. And they asked me to travel across Thailand to eat all of them. Over the last 10 days, I've traveled across Thailand to eat Thailand's hidden dishes. Oh, wow. From the mountains of Chiang Rai to the toddy palms of Peppuri. But today, we're going deep into the jungle of southern Thailand to cook and eat a dish that's so rare, few Thais have even heard of it. Hey everyone, it's Mark Wiens and welcome to Trang in southern Thailand. And we're actually on our way to the province of Patalung for the hidden dish but the closest airport is in Trang, so we caught an early morning flight. We're on our way to Trang. We landed here in Trang, we picked up a rental car, and while we're here, actually this is a breakfast capital. As soon as you sit down, they bring you a tray of dim sum to choose from. So I thought we should stop for breakfast before we head to Patalung. Oh man, I really love Trang. If you have some time to spend in Trang, it's a fantastic city, it's a fantastic province in Thailand. The energy, the action, the colors, they have one of the best morning markets in all of Thailand. People are friendly, and the food is delicious. And it is a beautiful, sunny morning in Trang. We're in for an incredible day. Okay, so we are gonna have a real Trang style breakfast here at Trang Muyang. And it's literally as soon as you sit down, they bring you a tray of dim sum to choose from. I absolutely love this place. It's a classic, it's a legendary Trang institution, breakfast institution. So there's all sorts of unique creations, and I'll just start putting a few on the table. I think we'll go for the rice cake, a variety of kanam jeeps. These are like the little dumplings, show my dumplings. I like the bitter melon, hakao, which I think is shrimp on the inside. You want the, Ying wants the salapao, the, the buns. And then I think also you gotta try, this is also super trang style, the fried egg rolls, which are definitely unique. And then the vegetables. And I think I'll go first for one of the kanum jeeps. These are the, the show my trang style. That's pretty tasty. Porky. I like how the noodle wrapper is kind of chewy and really nice texture to it. And then the sauce is kind of like a sweet chili sauce. It's sweet, not spicy at all. It just kind of gives that balance of flavor. Okay, I'll try the, the broccoli next. A little broccoli dumpling with some minced pork. Mmm. It's really juicy broccoli. And there's this really tender kind of dissolving pork meatball on the bottom. It is dim sum, but it has its own unique character and along with the food. I think what I probably like the most is just the culture. I mean, people love to eat breakfast in Trang. Families come, employees and colleagues come together. They sit at a table, enjoy some tea, some coffee, some dim sum, chat, hang out. I mean, it's one of the greatest ways to spend your morning. But along with dim sum, this place is also really famous for their name called Trang Muyang. And that is the roasted pork that you'll just find across Trang. And if you ask any person from Thailand what to eat in Trang, the first thing that's gonna come to mind is the Trang style muyang, roasted pig. They roast the whole pig. They marinate it in a variety of spices like soy sauce, star anise. There's a huge amount of spices in it. And typically it's quite sweet 
So this place is known for their muyang, and it's all sitting up there at the front. You can see all of like the pork from the inside just glistening. And even the way they cut it is very unique. They score it, so it has these little, kind of like little fingers coming out of the pork. Just let it seep in all of that marinade, all of that flavor. And then they roast it so the skin is extra crispy. She sliced this up a fresh plate, chopped this up a fresh plate. You could just hear the crackling of that skin. So here we go, you check this. Now when you get a piece, you'll see that it has the meat on the bottom. So it's got the belly section. Then it has fat variety of layers of fat and then the skin on the top giving it all those crispy, all those different layers of texture and flavor. Mm. Oh wow. Oh that's extremely tasty. It is sweet. All all Trang Muyang is sweet. This one might not be as sweet as some that we've tasted though. It's almost like candy pork. But then at the same time, you really taste the spices, especially coming through the, the star anise. It almost has a little bit of a cumin flavor to it to me. You've got the incredibly crispy skin, the fat that melts in your mouth, and then the meat and the smokiness as well. All of those caramelized sugars and ingredients just totally absorbed into the pork. Well, that's tasty. Let's try another piece of the, just straight up the skin. Yeah, it's so crispy. Mm. And I'm getting some black pepper in that bite as well. Black pepper, star anise, there's varieties of soy sauce, the sweet caramelized sugar, the porkiness. And then with all the rich porkiness, definitely wash it down with some hot Chinese tea. You got the congee and it comes really nicely decorated. There's some chili oil, there's some garlic, there's some ginger on top with an egg on the inside. So you stir it all around. Oh, that's good. I was debating whether I should try this or not. I really wanted to, but then I was like, oh man, we have so much food to eat today. But the owner, they're so, and by the way, I should mention that the owner family here, they're so nice, they're so welcoming. Uh, this is family run, and they brought over a plate of kanumjin nam yapu. So this is another classic breakfast that you'll find. I mean, throughout Southern Thailand, it is soft rice noodles, which then has a coconut milk based curry with crab in it. And this is, oh man, it's one of the greatest things to eat in the morning for breakfast. Mm. Oh, wow. That is the flavor of the south of Thailand in your mouth at once. The rice noodles just melt in your mouth. The thick creaminess of the coconut milk, the curry, the turmeric in there, the crab in there. There might be some fish in there also to, to make it, to thicken it, to give it some body. Oh man. And you've got the natural sweetness of that coconut milk and then the chili heat in the back of your throat. Wow, that's good. Oh man, Ying, this is actually the exact flavor of your mom's kanam jin. Like, oh, same flavor. So good. Served with all the different vegetables that you can garnish, that you can chase with. Okay, this makes our breakfast complete. Mmm. Mmm. And let's chase. And always one of my personal favorites are the cashew tree leaves. because they're immediately sour, and then they have this unique chalkiness that kind of coats your mouth. Which is just one of the many reasons I love Southern Thailand. Oh, that went down so easily. I couldn't put down my spoon. So good. Oh yeah, happiness. Chase. Oh. Oh, what a breakfast. Oh, sweating in the morning. All that digestion, all that pork, delicious breakfast in Trang. And we are now on our way to the main event, to Patalung. I think it's gonna be about an hour to get where we are going, because we're not actually driving all the way to the town of Patalung. Uh, we're driving to go meet our friend, Piju in the jungle of Patalung. This is gonna be an incredible experience. Okay, here we go. I think it should be about a one hour drive. Actually, one more really quick stop before we head to Patalung. Kalung Black Cup. Cup in my cup. Mmm. 
fantastic coffee, really friendly owner, highly recommended. Okay, we're on our way to Patalum. Oh man, Patalung is just such a green, lush paradise. The jungle here is pristine. We have arrived. It's so good to be back hanging out with Piju and Pinong. I think it's been about two years ago we came here. And I mean, this place is a nature paradise. They were so friendly welcoming us. And we are going immediately to go harvest the rattan shoots, which are right across the river. A little bit slippery. Okay, we made it across the river to the rattan. And it, in Thai, it's called Wai. And I am extremely excited because I've been, I've spent so much time in Southern Thailand. I've spent time in Patalung many, many times, but at least not that I know of. Maybe at a curry stall, I've had this dish before and I've had rattan shoots, but I can't, I don't think I've ever actually had this dish. So this is a real treat. I am extremely excited. And especially I'm always excited hiking through the jungle, looking for ingredients like this to see where exactly your source of food comes from. Oh, here it is. So just across the river and we have come to the first rattan and you can see how it's my, oh, she's gonna chop it immediately. It's extremely spiky. Here it is, this is our first shoot from the rattan. And again, it's so incredibly spiky, like, huge thorns. Oh, I have a, a stick insect on me. <laughs> this is the real jungle. Uh, but this is what we're looking for. These are the rattan shoots, the young shoots. And when you peel away the woody bark outer surface, that's what's edible. The shoots on the inside, the juicy shoots. And I believe the rattan is a type of palm tree, but it grows kind of like a vine. And I mean, again, it's very common to use for furniture. Most of us know rattan as a material used for furniture uh, and making wicker baskets and all sorts of uh, materials, but not as an edible plant. And so we're seeing a total surprising, unique ingredient way to use rattan in the jungle of Southern Thailand. Oh yeah, that feels so good. Refreshing straight from the mountain. So actually, after we harvested the ingredients, we then took a little drive into the mountains where Piju has another piece of land deeper into the jungle, into the mountains of Patalung. ingredients. Look, the entire truck is just filled with green things from the jungle. Yes, my favorite ingredient on earth, stink beans. So from the, from the car, the road ends on the dirt road and now we need to hike in. Oh, beautiful place. Wow, stunning. And so this is where we're gonna do the cooking.
This is the freshest rambutan you'll ever eat. Oh, just blooming. So beautiful. Oh man, check out this one. It's perfect. Straight jungle rambutan. Oh. Mm. Oh, wow. The best rambutan you'll ever have. So we're just getting started with the recipe uh, for the gang nam koi. And this is one of the main ingredients along with the ratan shoots. This is the, the koi, the krill paste. I'm gonna quickly taste it. Mm. This is something totally new that I've learned. The koi here, which I thought was shrimp paste or krill paste, it's actually fermented fish, which is pounded down with salt into this blob. So that's just like fermented fish. Um, this is the main ingredient for the curry along with the rattan shoots. And then she's just laid out all of the other ingredients that are going to go into this dish is curry, a beautiful assortment of turmeric, makrut lime leaves, roasted fish, palm sugar, pumpkin, young galangal. Oh, and this is going directly, whoa, the stickiness. <laughs> oh, the whole blob goes in. Blob. Okay. Yeah. And the ingredients list actually keeps on growing. She's keeping adding more ingredients. And these are the, the ratan shoots that we harvested this morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, barbecue. <laughs> barbecue durian. You want to eat? Oh, yes, please. Cup and cup. Ying. Okay. Oh, it's time. Our first durian. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. Roy, Roy. <laughs> Roy, Roy. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's just butter. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That's so sweet. Perfect. Bittersweet cream. A creamsicle in your mouth. Mm. This is just pure happiness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a kitchen snack right here. So the next step is to peel the yot wai. These are the ratan shoots. So you have to peel off that outer bark, that really hard outer bark that is used for furniture making. And that's what's going to go into the curry, the young shoots from the interior of the ratan. And so again, as Piju was mentioning to us, Gang Nam Koi Yot Wai, the ratan shoot curry that we're eating, it's rare to find these days. But he said previously, it used to be a very common dish, especially in villages when there were gatherings, when people would come together. It used to be a common celebration dish. But now, again, it's, you won't find it at restaurants. You won't find it just anywhere. You have to go to the right person to make it. It's, and you can tell why, just the amount of ingredients and even just the dangerous, like just how dangerous that ingredient is to harvest it and to peel it and to prepare it. Ratan shoots are ready, now back to the curry paste. She's gonna make a pound up first black pepper, a lot of black pepper. It's actually, are actually traditionally used in the recipes in Southern Thailand. Wow, that already smells insane, yes. An insane amount of uh, black pepper. Bird's eye chilies, and they said they keep it natural using the stems and some of the leaves as well. And then garlic in there. Turmeric, okay, yes. And as we're continuing to pound the curry paste, uh, Pinong just adds in garlic and lemongrass. Oh, and also galango goes into the water. 
And then lemongrass, so the magrut lime leaves went in, now lemongrass goes in. We need to take a moment to appreciate Pinong's hand on the chilies. I've done that before, and my hand just burns on fire for like two days, and she just does it with ease. She says it doesn't bother her at all. Palm sugar. Palm sugar, okay. Palm sugar. One more. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, there's so much green in there, it actually turns green and yellow from that turmeric. I like them. Wait, this is the. This is the yawai. Yawai, Why do you have to tam? Is it like hard or is it uh? Go to all the naman. Oh! So oh, this dish has taken another unexpected twist. The yawai or the ratan shoots, they're pounded to bring out the juice. She wants. She said she wants the water from the ratan shoots, and I guess that is one of the secret flavoring ingredients of this dish. Um, and then she's gonna boil that and then since well we'll have to wait and find out but something like the chunky herbs will be then strained out of the broth so that it's clean leaving all that flavor just infusing into the broth and as those ratan shoots uh, touch oxygen they just immediately oxidize oxidize yeah they turn red such a unique dish The yot wai is pounded. That goes into the curry, and that's gonna simmer, she said, for about 30 minutes to bring out all of the juices. The aroma is unbelievable. That amount of chilies, the garlic, the turmeric. Oh, what a dish. But in the meantime, they've been like over here. <laughs> you gotta come check this out. They've been making a, a fruit monument over here with all the local fruit that they've harvested. This is a community that's just just and I have the honor to write the sign. So this community is called Namtok. The Namtok ecotourism community. It's really an honor to be here for kind of like ushering in this uh, like a dedication to this community here, deep in the jungle of Patalung. And we're here with all the, the community for this celebration. For this dish, she wants a very clean broth. So actually that all gets sifted through, all the herbs get taken out. They've already served their purpose infusing that broth. And so then we're gonna be left with this really clean, infused, ultra flavorful broth. Oh, galango. Yes. Oh, more galango oh, goes in. Yeah. Pumpkin <laughs> goes in. And the sweet potato, okay. Eggplant. Yes, some of the fresh eggplant. And this is the mackerel, roasted mackerel. Whoa, a bunch of makrut lime leaves go in. You have to add in a squeeze of lime juice as well. So another ingredient that's gonna go, gang som hua. It's a type of citrus, young citrus leaves. And they said that this is the only, wow. That smells like, like orange oil coming out of there. They said that this is the only recipe that uses these leaves.
Mission complete, it is ready, the curry, Thailand's hidden dish from Patalung, Gang Nam Khoi Yot Wai, which is the Ratan Shoot Curry. But what a process, what a dish. This is something truly incredibly complex in making use of all the ingredients, the abundance of ingredients from the south of Thailand. I cannot wait to try it. And they're wanting me, they said, I should just dig in right now while it's, while it's ready, although we're making more rice, so the entire community, we're gonna sit down after this to, for this meal, for this joyous occasion, and also kind of like celebrating this community here in the forest. First thing I need to do is just taste that broth again. 20 different ingredients in this broth. You see the yellowness of the turmeric. You can smell the aroma of that fermented fish. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a powerful flavor. Oh, wow. Powerful, but so unbelievably balanced. Spicy, turmeric, garlic, galangal. You've got that umami of the fermented fish, the sharp saltiness. Actually, you don't even really taste the sweetness, but you know that sweetness is there just balancing all those saltiness and all those ferocious, powerful ingredients. That's an unbelievable amount of condensed flavor. Oh, that's incredible. Then we, we've got fish, we've got the eggplant. I'm gonna put some of this onto my, to my rice. The pumpkin. Oh, that broth is just unbelievable. Literally, you could drink and savor that broth. Oh, wow. Oh man, this might be one of my new favorite curries in the south of Thailand. I mean, it's a little bit hard to decipher or distinguish what the, the ratan shoots, how they provide the flavor, but I think it's like this kind of juicy bitterness that just wraps up the flavor of this because they said, if you make, out, if you make this dish, I mean, even though there are 20 other ingredients in it, if you make it without the ratan shoots, it tastes totally different and it doesn't have the same balance of flavor. Mm. It's like an unbelievable harmony. The pumpkin melts in your mouth, the smoky fish, the toasty flavors all coming together in that broth. And again, like this entire series, traveling across Thailand for the hidden dishes, all food is ingredient driven, but these dishes are truly about the ingredient, about the natural ingredient that goes into them. That's an absolute must, that's mandatory to make these dishes. And as you keep on eating that broth, you almost start to get a little numbingness in your mouth. She you put in more, just whole chunks of galangal. Oh, wow. Oh, that's flavorful. Oh, man, and woody. Oh, that's spicy, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I love Galanga. What an ingredient. Truly, like, so hard to find. Such a rare Southern Thai dish. I mean, again, I've asked people from Southern Thailand if they've ever even heard of this dish and haven't even, haven't even heard of it. That this is a dish that needs to be preserved. And I mean, I mean, and that's exactly what they're aiming to do here with my, our great friend, Pi Ju and Pi Nong, who are preserving Thai heritage, the natural environment and culture of Southern Thailand. Yeah, they're just amazing people. From here, we're gonna all gather together with the community that's joined us. I think the head of the, the village here has also joined us. And so we're gonna enjoy our meal together, eat some more fruits, and just spend time together eating one of the greatest hidden Thai dishes. You do, do I come? <laughs> okay, so now we're all sitting together. Oh man, and almost forgetting. I almost forgot first round around the, they roasted the sata, the stink beans, one of my favorite ingredients. You can just pop them out because they've been roasted. Oh, and cooking them, it doesn't cook them fully, but it just kind of like wilts them. Oh, one of the best single ingredients on earth. So good. All right, and then we also have some of the dried fish here to add some extra protein. Oh, so good. Okay, and this stink bean is ripe. You can see the sweetness, the, it's orange and sweet. So sticky. Oh, wow. That's like stink bean jam roasted. I've had the ripe stink beans um, raw, but never cooked like this. That like makes it sticky and the sugars come out. Mm. It's like a mango with stink beans. Oh, that's so good. And in the south of Thailand, you always got to have some raw vegetables to garnish. 
to cleanse the pellet. Oh man, oh, what a just spectacular meal, a learning experience, the complexity, the friendliness, the Southern Thai culture. Look at how clear, clean the water is. Man, it's just a nature paradise. Just wild stink beans, langsat, wild durian growing all over the place. The water is so pristine. And they said this is a, a nature paradise of deer. There's a lot of deer in this area that they are working to preserve. You just walk around this area and you just, there's durians because it's durian season. They're just dropping to the ground. And this is the best kind of durian. When they naturally drop to the ground, that's when they're perfectly ripe. That's the best flavor. Here's another one that just fell from the ground. Just like a backyard wild durian. Yeah, it's huge for just dropped to the ground. I saw this fruit in the tree, which is this really red fruit. It's called mafai. It's a rare fruit, except they have it in this region. And they said, okay, let's go get it. It's right up in the tree. He's climbing the tree right now. And he's just barefoot climbing the tree. How is he even holding on? Oh, man. <laughs> mafai. He really is a Tarzan. <laughs> He's just climbing up the tree. Like, he just like sprinted up the tree. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, into the water. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so it's very similar to a, a Lang Sat or a, or a Long Kong, but called Ma Phai. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, it's wild milky and more sour than sweet. Oh, that's delicious. Mmm, amazing. Absolutely a fruit paradise. What an incredible fruit. Oh yeah, so this is our tree house. And again, I mean, as we've seen today, it's just such a nature oriented, everything is built to surround nature. And so we have a, this is our tree house cabin that we're spending the night in with a view of the river, you always will hear the flowing water from wherever you are, the peace, the nature. And that's, I mean, one of the characteristics about this place. Oh man, it's such a, such a cool place. And there's a variety of tree houses down the river. One of the cool things is that when you're right over the flowing water, there's less mosquitoes or maybe not even any mosquitoes. As soon as you go into the jungle, you'll get eaten. But right along the river, there's no mosquitoes. And this is our room. Basic mattresses are on the floor, but all made from wood and over the river. And I think that's what makes it so special. We do have a bathroom in our cabin as well though. Also basic water that you flush in the corner there. Oh, yeah, this place is a jungle eco camp. So nature friendly, nature oriented. But from here, gonna shower, gonna take an early night, get some rest, and then tomorrow we're heading into Patalung town. Had a nice relaxing morning, and from here it's about a 40 minute drive for some more food. So we drove to Patalung town. It's so laid back, so peaceful, such a cool town. And also the karst limestone rock mountain formations are so iconic and beautiful part of Patalung. Uh, and there's a restaurant here that I absolutely cannot miss when I come to Patalung. We came here a couple of years ago and made a video. And check this out. They've done a little renovation. Look who it is. Swadikab, Swadikab. 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 Swadik
<laughs> ขอบคุณมากครับโอเค that's fresh galanga sliced up and one of the reasons the food is so good here is that they make all of their own curry paste they pound all the curry paste themselves they control the ingredients so they know all the flavors that are going into their dishes but they make it all themselves and their recipe is very simple and very unique here Freshwater prawns. You put them into the just that's just water, and almost instantaneously, as it starts to boil, you can see the head butter juices, the oils. All the water actually turns red because of that head butter juices, which are coming out into the water, and that's what gives it the flavor. That's what powers it, gives it the shrimpiness. Oh man, my mouth is watering. For that catfish with the curry paste, the final step is that she chops up some fresh. Uh, it's called bayira, or in English, it's tree basil or clove basil. It's really aromatic. She she tosses that on top, kind of just waits for it to wilt, turns off the fire, ready for the tom yum. And I totally remember the process. I mean, she keeps an eye on it to make sure they don't overcook. But she boils it until all of that head butter juices. It's called man in Thai. All of it comes out into the broth. Then. She removes the shrimp so they don't overcook, and then she finishes the broth by adding lime juice and some salt and fish sauce to the to the broth. And then in the meantime, she chops up some onions and some uh, fresh chilies. She'd call them like backyard chilies. She chops those up, puts them on top of the shrimp, and then after she balances the broth, then she pours that over the entire mixture, keeping the freshwater prawns fresh, not overcooked, and just preserving just their natural beauty and just. Oh man, it's a beautiful dish. And now she's gonna get started on the g e n g s o m Southern Thai style yellow sour curry. Again, something you have to eat when you come to Patalun. Food is ready. Oh, I cannot wait to start eating, especially the g e n g s o m and the shrimp. Oh man. Oh, yes. I think this might be exactly what we ordered last time. Let's start with that g e n g s o m Oh, just with that broth. Uh, there's mixed vegetables in here: eggplant and coconut shoots. Oh yes, oh man, that's the flavor of the south of Thailand. And Patalung has some of the best turmeric in the south of Thailand. So vibrant, so pungent. The turmeric, the chilies, and then she adds in a lot of lime juice to make it sour. Oh man, that's a broth of wonders. Okay, and then of course their signature tom yum. Literally, that is so dark yellow, so orange. It almost looks like a duck yolk. And then I love how they add chilies, how they add chopped up onions in here into the broth. And again, sour from lime juice. Oh, oh wow. Mm-hmm. Same flavor. Those shrimp powering it. The head butter juices, t a m a l i The richness of it. The crunch of the fresh onions. The freshness of the fresh chilies. Oh, it's so good. I'm going in. Look at it. Look at how big it is. And the actual the sh the shell has been peeled off, so revealing the entire body underneath. Oh, look! Look at all the. The oil coming out. Did you see that? <laughs> like a waterfall of. It was like a a lava cake, erupting. Oh wow. Mhm. Mm Put that onto the rice. You can mix it with the, the prawn. Mm. Literally just melts in your mouth. And then we also do have some some s a t a some stink beans on the table. One of my favorite ingredients on Earth. Oh yeah. Never get old. I can eat them every single day. They're healthy. They're full of nutrition, and then just that kind of like bitter juiciness that comes out of them. Okay, and then we have the pad pet. This is the stir fried curry paste with a type of catfish as well. Oh, and the fragrance of the b a y i r a the the tree basil. And I think everything here is uh, fresh water, fresh water seafood. Oh, and I almost forgot about the galango. Mmm. Oh, the galango is incredible. The freshness of that clovey flavored tree basil, the fish, the curry paste has kind of this toasty, smoky flavor, and kind of sweet and spicy. Amazing. Home cooked family Southern Thai food. Okay, but I'm going back to the g e n g s o m That fish melts in your mouth. Buttery, oily, fatty, and then again that that curry. 
unbelievable. The flavor, the thickness, oh, the shrimp paste that also gives it some depth of flavor and that saltiness that adds to it. But just that, that turmeric broth is just, man, I cannot get enough of it. To this day, and I mean, my mother-in-law, Ying's mom, cooks this for me at least two or three times per week, but I cannot get enough of it. I can eat it every single day and never get tired of it. Oh man, my shirt is just drenched. This is one of those meals where you just end up hot and sweaty, a hot and sweaty mess. Mm. That is sweet, juicy, mm. so good. I love mango schneen. Looks like it's about to rain this afternoon. Oh, but that brings us to the end of this patalung segment. It's been so incredible to learn about the hidden dish and the ingredients behind it and also the amazing people behind those dishes as well. And actually, this is, wraps up the entire series, so all five Thailand's hidden dishes. We've traveled across the country from Chiang Rai to Khon Ken to Petburi to Trat and Khot Chang, and then finally here in the south of Thailand in Patalung. What an incredible journey, and I think the uniqueness of these dishes um, what really stands out to me is that they're all focused on this one ingredient that is an absolute must that you need to have to make this dish. I've definitely learned a lot and it's been an overjoy of taste buds. Oh, wow. Oh, it's amazing. And also meeting some incredible people, people that I've met for the first time, as well as reconnecting with friends. And this entire series just goes to show how diverse the people of Thailand are, the food, the uniqueness of ingredients. And this is something that I've known and that I've thought for my entire almost 15 years living being based in Thailand. And even after exploring so much of this country, there's still so much more to learn and explore. Oh yeah, it's really about to downpour. So I want to end by saying a huge thank you to the Tourism Authority of Thailand for sending me on this mission, on this journey across Thailand to eat five of Thailand's hidden dishes. And if you haven't already watched this entire series, make sure you go back. There's five videos. Make sure you watch this entire series. They all go together. And we, I mean, we really went from the very north to the south of Thailand, searching for these unique and rare Thai dishes that are really not found outside of those provinces. Uh, so that's gonna be it. I wanna say a big thank you also to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from Patalung. This is where our journey ends and I will see you on the next video.